Hello students, today we're going to predict redox reactions using our table of reduction half reactions. So a lot of times we just give you the reaction, we just, it's on the paper, we just give it right to you. But sometimes you'll have to figure out what the reaction is by what we're, what we're combining in the reaction. So I'll show you an example. Uh, the two strongest entities will be the most likely to react so if you follow these steps, you can figure out how to um, determine which, um, which entities are reacting with each other. Okay, so uh, there's our steps. We'll go through them. Okay, so look at the example. If tin 2 chloride solution is mixed with acidic potassium permanganate solution, predict the redox reaction. Okay, so I, I always describe it like this. If we have this inter-school dance, so we have four or five different schools invited to the dance, um, and so all these kids come into the building, um, you know that there's going to be people that you're attracted to, so you'll you'll um, uh, you know you'll want to go ask somebody to dance. Okay, so <laughs> this is asking which two of the th of the entities in the beaker are most likely to ask each other to dance. Okay, so. First, we know that we have tin 2 chloride solution. So in our beaker, we've got tin ions, chloride ions, and of course, it says aqueous, so we know there's got to be water present. The other beaker is acidic potassium permanganate. So potassium permanganate is KMNO4, but it splits up to K positive, MNO4 negative. We know that there has to be water in there, and it also says acidic. And you should know from the last unit that that means we have H positive present. Okay, and permanganate is a purple color, so there you go. And now we're going to pour everybody into the same beaker and figure out which two are going to ask each other to dance. Okay, so all of those get poured into the same beaker. All right, now who's going to react with who? Okay, so predict the redox reaction. Okay, so who's going to react with who? Is K positive going to react with Cl negative? All right, so list all the entities. In other words, list every kid at the dance. Okay, so I've got SN2 positive at the dance, Cl negative, K positive, MNO4 negative, acid, and water. Of those, let's go to our table and identify the strongest oxidizing agent and the strongest reducing agent. So here's our table. I've listed on the left all the kids at our dance. Okay, and remember, on the left side we have OAs, on the right side we have RAs. So where's tin 2? It's in a couple of spots. There we go. Chloride is all over the place, but we're looking for one that's by itself. For example, here's chloride plus two hydroxides. But hydroxide isn't a kid at our dance, so we don't use that one. It has to be just kids at our dance. Okay, K positive is down there, MNO4 negative is there, H positive is all over the place, but let's just use the one that's by itself because the ones that have others aren't at our dance. And water is there and there. Okay, there's all of the kids at our dance. So, identify the SOA and the SRA. There's my strongest oxidizing agent, the highest on the left. And that will react with the strongest reducing agent, the lowest on the right. So that, those are the two kids that will ask each other to dance, okay, in this weird example. Okay, so I now write down SOA on top of the MNO4 negative. That's my strongest oxidizing agent. And the strongest reducing agent is the tin 2 ion. And we know that oxidizing agents are reduced and reducing agents are oxidized. Okay, and now it's really easy. I just copy that reaction down, okay? I just copy it down. Okay, so my reduction half reaction is, there it is in the data book, and I just copy that down, okay? Now for the strongest reducing agent, we have to realize that right now, the way it's written in the data book is a reduction equation. But my strongest reducing agent is oxidized, so I have to write an oxidation equation, which means I have to flip it. I have to flip that reaction to make it oxidation. So back to here. 
That's what I see in the data book, but I have to flip that. I have to make tin 2 on the left, our reactant, producing tin 4 by throwing away two electrons. Okay? All right, so there. Now I've just copied them right out of the book. There's my reduction half reaction, and there's my oxidation half reaction. Okay, next thing is balance electrons and write the net equation. So what I see here is tin 2 on the bottom is throwing away 2 electrons, and MnO4 negative is gaining 5. Well, those have to balance. If I throw 2, I can't receive 5. They've got to be the same number. So I'm going to make it 10. I'm going to multiply that one by 2 to give me 10 electrons and multiply that one by 5. Okay, so now I've multiplied both reactions by the appropriate number, and now I just do the math. I cancel my electrons, and my net reaction is 2 permanganates plus 2 times 8, 16 H positives, plus 5 SN2 positives produces 2 MN2s, 2 times 4 is 8 waters, and 5 SN4 positives. And that is my net reaction. I can check my net charge. I have um, two negatives, but I also have 16 positives plus 5 times 2 is another 10 positives. So I've got 26 positives minus those two, so 24. On the other side, it comes out to 24 as well. 2 times 2 is 4. 8 times 0 is 0, and 5 times 4 is 20, plus 24, plus 24. Okay, that is how um, you, you devise a net reaction using a table of reduction half reactions. Let's indicate if this reaction is spontaneous or not. Of course, we know the OA is above the RA, so this is spontaneous. And all that's really happening here is tin... Um, five tins are just throwing away 10 electrons over to permanganate, okay? Uh, the tin ion is oxidizing, throwing away electrons. Permanganate is grabbing electrons. And there you go.